everybody, uh, Mike Forsyth here. I wanted to start a new series. I'm gonna call this Car Insight with Forsyth, obviously. And um, behind me, I have the 2025 Toyota Camry XSE, and it also has all wheel drive. Um, for this channel and series I'm starting, um, it's really about showing the day-to-day -day aspects of the vehicle. I want to present something differently than what you get from all the other good or bad channels that are out there. So I put about 600 miles on this vehicle in a week, and I feel I got a really good taste of, honestly, it was mostly good about this vehicle, not much bad about it. So I'm excited to share with you. As I stated, uh, 2025 Toyota Camry XSE all-wheel drive. This isn't a Reservoir Blue, which I think is a stunningly good color. I'm used to a lot of the Lexus Blues, as you all know me. Um, but this is a blue I really, really like. And obviously the first difference, as you can see, compared to the eighth generation, this ninth generation Camry, as you can see, has that new front end um, that kind of shares the new corporate face that Toyota is going for. I never had an issue with the eighth generation's looks. I think it's a, still a fabulous looking vehicle. I never had a problem with the eighth generation looks. I think after five or six years, it still looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, so the new corporate face, I also like this as well. You can all decide if you like it better than the eighth generation. But as you can see, the main thing changed to me is the color key grille. You have the new front end with the Toyota familiar front face, the color key grill here. Obviously the new LED light. So this is the LED daytime light. And then you have the high, the normal and the high beams here. Um, this is in a familiar shape with the previous generation. So kind of could had some continuity there. And um, the hood is obviously all different. There's one cool thing I didn't know. Um, so if you ever noticed that these hoods have that depressed um, hood line at the bottom, apparently that was a, a mandate due to Japanese law to hide the windshield wipers. Apparently, I think this Camry is the first one they said that doesn't have it. I could actually see a slight line here, but it doesn't dip down in before. That, that was a, a cool detail that I learned. Um, this is completely pretty much loaded. Um, it starts at $36,000, which I think is uh, pretty aggressive. And this is loaded, has the premium package. So it's about 40,000. And then uh, it has this wonderful accessory wheel, which I'll get close ups later. Um, $1,500 accessory. So this vehicle is right at $42,000. Continuing with the exterior theme of the car. So the knife generation isn't completely all new. It is a new knife generation that is called, but it is based on some of the previous architecture of the eighth generation. Um, but definitely some key differences here. The savvy mirror in addition is slightly different. You can see right here has the around view camera. Um, on the previous gen, this was chrome. Now it's blacked out. Gives it a much sportier look than the normal chrome that's around the car. I even noticed that the sides are matte instead of a gloss. The previous eighth gen had a nice panoramic roof option. This continues there. I believe it or not, the shark fin is slightly different in the eighth gen. I did notice that as well. The LED light, right? So this kind of flip flop that the, the eighth generation was pointing this way and they pointed it in this direction. I think what they did, which was pretty slick, was they added this black bar that has the Camry in black in it. So it kind of almost looks like one full piece, even though it's two separate units. Um, and then the spoiler is actually black, whereas the previous generation, I noticed it was color keyed to the car. The diffuser is also slightly different. And then you have the new badges that Toyota has debuted. So if it's a hybrid, it has HEV, hybrid electric vehicle, really showcasing the technology behind this car in this battery electric world, and then obviously the normal XSC badge over here to the right. So the interior is all new compared to the eighth generation, and I really, really like it. And as a longtime Lexus owner, I'm actually really impressed and blown away by the materials used. I mean, the soft touch dash is <laughs> really good. You have like a, a soft, soft text leather, I guess, here. Um, new 12.3 inch screen that is a touch screen. Obviously, I have my Apple CarPlay here. It is wireless as well. And I love how it flows into the dash. It almost reminds me like the LS a little bit with these lines right here, the piano black. And um, yeah, so this one again has the premium package. So I have uh, the heated and the ventilated seats. 
And that's one thing I noticed that I've been doing, like the button is here, but I kind of press D, so that's a little uh, something, a little tidbit about this car. Um, you see the air vents here, um, full digital dash that I'll show you in a second. And uh, I mean, you can see I'm six foot five. This is how I've been driving. As you can see, my headroom is actually pretty good. This is with my, my hat, shout out to Christine with my hat. I'll, I'll take my hat off. And you can see I fit like perfectly fine. I've had uh, my mom, my dad, and my auntie, my wonderful auntie from New York was in town. We did lunch together and we all fit in here fine. And they were actually blown away by the room. I don't think they've ever been in an eighth or a ninth generation Camry. So um, as, as something that would be used for families, absolutely uh, nails everything you're trying to accomplish. Redesign dash. So there's what I wanted to show you. Very important for us, right? So two USB-C ports here, USB-A. This does have a wireless charger here that does work. You do lose the eighth generation had like a hidden compartment area. You can see how deep this area here is. Obviously, most people's probably change and receipts and things of that nature, but you can put some tissues and stuff here. Then you have your two cup holders here. Um, obviously, here is your shift knob and then eco normal sport modes with changes on the dash. I'll share that. And this has the automatic parking. And what I love is the hold feature. If you're not sure about this feature, you press the feature when you're driving. When you're at a stoplight, for instance, you don't have to press the brake, the vehicle will hold uh, for you. And here is your full armrest. So this is actually something I use from Amazon that is great, but you do have your, uh, your nine volt uh, port right here. And that's about it. And then you have a nice deep glove box. I'm sorry, armrest here. Um, you can see I have my garage door open here, and then it has a normal glove box. So if you need, put your, you can leave your brochure here. You can put a few things here. It does have uh, a pretty decent sized glove box, as you can see. And in the doors, I can open this one, Diego. And you can just point, you can see there's a uh, indentation. It shows, yeah, you can put a bottle of water there and obviously some tissues or some wipes or whatever you need to do. Again, really thought out. And you can see uh, what I would love to, to show is Look at that, the, 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 again, the soft text and look at the perforations into it. I mean, it's really thought out. It's really soft to touch. It's really nice. I like the off aluminum kind of look right there. It's, it's a really well, really well designed vehicle. Full digital dash, what I think is really cool. You see right now, it's just showing the doors are open. Um, so there's an eco, a normal and sport mode. So I'll, it's in normal mode right now. I'll go to eco, you get this really uh, cool graphic. What eco mode does is obviously retard the throttle response a bit, so it's not as aggressive. It also retards the uh, AC. I guess there's two different levels. So when you're in eco mode, it kind of pulls AC back just a little bit um, to try to save you know, some fuel economy as well. And then I'll push into normal mode. This is what it looks like. And that adds the normal throttle response and then I'll change it to sport. All right, in sport mode, obviously in red, anything sport is always in red. This um, gives you a more aggressive throttle response. And uh, this vehicle does zero to 60 in about seven seconds. So it's not lightning fast, but it's faster than most. I've taken it up to speed most times. We'll get into the car and show you a little bit. Um, it's perfectly, perfectly fine. I see a Toyota Camry needs to excel as being a family vehicle, right? So you know, all know I'm six foot five. I'm heavier than I should be. Um, and you can see here, so my head does touch the top a little bit. Uh, if I take my head off, you can see I have a little bit more room. Um, so it's not like massive. I do, the Honda Accord does have more room. It's fine for most people. Most people aren't six foot five. You can see leg room is, is great. This is where the seat was when my, uh, my dad was sitting up here. And then yes, there's two rear air vents. You have another USB-C port here. And then you have an, another USB-A uh, over here as well. So it's definitely mindful that people in the back probably need to charge their phones or they're on some sort of device which is great you can see the center armrest here that changes and again two uh, led lights here as well reading lights and it looks really great because with the panoramic roof it gives the impression of obviously an area and larger cabin again this needs to excel um we are in an suv latin world we all know that um i'll talk about that a little bit more maybe in the car um so right here under here is how you open a trunk. So 15.1 cubic feet. Um, and if you get close, I brought my uh, carry-on so you can see just how much space is in here. I mean, it's pretty massive. So, oh, I forgot the bottle of water. I was gonna put that in the front. Um, so yeah, you can see it's pretty deep. This is my camera bag, um, some junk, more camera stuff. Um, but you can see tons of room. The seats don't fold down, which is something I would love to see uh, in the future. Um, 
And I noticed compared to the eighth gen, the, the hinges are exposed. I noticed the eighth gen had plastic wrapped around it. I'm not sure if it's because this is an early press car or not, and, but I, I believe that's a, a difference. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of the exterior and the interior. Uh, Diego's gonna hop in the car with me and we're gonna get some driving impressions. Um, I know a great road right up ahead and can't wait to talk to you some more. Yeah, every Toyota Camry is now a hybrid. Um, I know a lot of people are lamenting the loss of the wonderful 3.5 Z6, which is you know, a legendary engine in the Toyota world, but it is now gone. Um, if you look at it, the, Toyota sold about almost 300,000 units uh, in 23, and about 20,000 were V6s, and I think about 4,000 were TRDs. So as you can see, the majority uh, were not um, V6s, and I think Toyota understood that for most people, they would rather have uh, the miles per gallon. Let's talk about miles per gallon. Um, this is the all-wheel drive model. So uh, the front-wheel drive is about 47 miles per gallon on average. This one's about 43 miles per gallon, which is absolutely phenomenal because, again, this has a peak 232 horsepower. Uh, the front-wheel drive models make 225 horsepower. You can see I just kind of punched it a little bit. Now, tons was done about the suspension tuning on this car and um, my friend uh, Chad DeShane who was one of the senior product planners there and was one of the head guys in charge of launching this Camry um, I gave him a call and he gave me you know some more insight on you know what was done I mean this is a Camry and I'm I'm I mean I, I'm shocked at how well this drives a Camry before used to be much more floaty um, the steering used to give no feedback uh, I don't want to say like driving an old Cadillac, but you know, Camry back in the day, 20 years ago, meant just flat out comfort. This new one is actually engaging, which is shocking to me. And it's not just me. Obviously, I'm going to be slightly biased being a long time Lexus owner uh, and my company works with the brand. But you can read all the professional reviews and they all kind of say the same thing that, wow, this new Camry actually handles, it actually drives, it's actually engaging, which is um, even more interesting considering, you know, it's a CBT transmission. I'm just downshifting right now. I'm gonna get out this Ford Explorer's way because I don't know, he's thinking McDonald's closes early or something. So yeah, up and up and down. I, I love pedal shifters. So it simulates, I had a GS450H, it simulates dropping into a lower gear. I think it's a fantastic piece of technology. Um, eyesight is great. There's, the windows are massive, so you can see all around you with no problem. Um, I would like to see a digital mirror here in the future maybe. I, I'm a big fan of the digital mirrors, but again, driving around town to get you know 43 miles per gallon look when i was when i was hooliganing and really pushing this car i was getting like you know 32 miles a gallon and that's was like really pushing it and uh when i was cruising on the highway and and definitely in the city it was in the city actually i was getting 50 miles a gallon i was you know just letting the battery do its work which is absolutely phenomenal when i picked up this car again i set up i put about 600 miles on this car in a week when i picked it up i saw 485 miles per tank so I'm sure if I really got down to it, I could easily get that over 500 miles, which is obviously a big reason today uh, for the push to battery electric vehicles um, like this one. And obviously a lot of people go to full EV. They don't want to go to gas stations. They don't want to spend their money on gas. Well, here in this Toyota Camry, again, they're all hybrids and you would significantly see less of the gas station, which is kind of funny when we found that uh, gas station that was closed down. I mean, <laughs> it's part of the reason would be less people are using gas. Another first on the Camry here, uh, I am now on the highway. Um, this has front laminated acoustic glass, so it offers less wind noise than before. And believe it or not, these cars all have a new special gasket that around the door handle. Apparently around the door handle is actually where a lot of wind noise comes in and it makes sense because you can pull them open and close and the wind, I guess, gets in between those cracks. So the engineers uh, in Georgetown, Kentucky, obviously, you know, partnering with the team in Japan, but it's led, this is a completely American-led effort uh, made here, which is really cool. Um, so there's actually a special gasket behind the door handle um, to help lessen the wind noise. As you can see, um, just driving around, it is absolutely great. Now, the one thing, I find that reminds me of like an old school Camry is when you're on the highway. So um, we drove to Macon on Saturday. The speed limit is 70 miles an hour. And I noticed when I was making some uh, changes um, through the lanes, I felt like it was more floaty than at lower speeds. And I'm assuming the electronics obviously is loosening things up. So that was something that obviously not alarming. It was just like, oh, okay, well, that's definitely different. I do think the 2025 Camry really shines around town 
And believe it or not, when you're having a little bit of fun on, uh, on, some, on some low speed corners. All right, now you can hear perfect silence because the car is running in hybrid mode. This is nothing new to Toyota. They are the hybrid technology leaders. And this is the fifth generation system. And just to give you some history, again, this is the ninth generation Camry. And the first generation, I think, made peak 130 horsepower, right? So this makes 232, 100 horsepower more. This is relatively lightweight. It's only uh, 3,500 pounds in all-wheel drive. The original one, I think, was about a thousand pounds less but the interesting thing is again this is zero to 60 and the low seven second range whereas the first generation camry zero to 60 in about 12 seconds so the technology behind these vehicles is absolutely phenomenal because you kind of are getting the best of both worlds here you're getting obviously more performance um based on just a naturally aspirated normal 2.5 liter inline four that Toyota normally uses. Um, with the hybrid powertrain, not only are you getting significant jump in gas mileage, you get um, more power. You know, this class of car has is shrinking, right? So next year we're losing the Malibu. I think the Altima will soon be on its way out. Uh, the Legacy has been announced it's on its way out. So you really just have the Camry Accord, um, not really playing though. I mean, the Ford Fusion is gone. I mean, it's kind of interesting. And then you have the players from uh, South Korea. You have or the K5 and then the uh, Sonata, right? So this class is really small. The like Camry completely dominates. It's at, I think over 30% of sales in this class. And it's really interesting. Uh, it's not really talked about, but it's really interesting how the Camry and Accord used to sell tit for tat, like one for one. But last year, the Camry outsold the Accord by 90,000 units. And this year in 2024, I, I think they're on pace to actually exceed that. So it really just goes to show Toyota has really nailed um, what people want in a family sedan. And again, exterior looks, interior comfort, tons of space. Uh, and again, the hybrid power as well as the fuel efficiency. I mean, you just have an all around win. So this does have the uh, driver attention monitor. So if I look away too long, let's see if I can do it. Like I'm gonna look this way. Oh, there it is. So if, it beeps a lot, like like a lot of the new cars with a lot of new technology. So that's something uh, you might not like too much. And um, again, the 12.3 inch screen. So I know we moved the camera, but everything is easy to use, and which is which is great because um, there's nothing worse than you know jumbling around trying to figure things out. Obviously, uh, I believe this is called a Toyota Audio Multimedia, and uh, similar to Lexus Interface, obviously, and um, it's really simple and easy to use and you know tons of people complained about buttons and touchscreen and you know whatever and now we have a nice you know large 12.3 inch screen easy to use i'm having a little bit of fun here in the camry uh it's really simple so something you should know the suspension is complete completely retuned they did a lot of effort into it. it's 20 percent stiffer uh as a uh xsc se uh, and even the, the non-SC um, models are 6% six per, six stiffer. And the coils are all new. They also changed like the hubs. Um, they put a lot of effort into making sure that the Camry was a driver, better driving car. And I can definitely say that. And again, it's not just me. I can't just say, oh, well, Mike's biased. Like if you watch any of the reviews, if you read any of the reviews, they all comment. I'm going around here, one hand. I mean, this is incredible in a Toyota Camry. I'm um, going around this roundabout really, <laughs> car is slowing me down i could go faster and it has all-wheel drive so it's an all-wheel drive system that's based on um, slippage so it's front wheel drive in most conditions and if it feels that there's any slippage about to happen and the rear is kicking um this isn't a torque vectoring system um by any means but it's still a very good system i think for most people it's great you gotta understand a camry still needs to nail being a camry right so if you're thinking it needs to be some you know 500 horsepower fire breather you're looking at the wrong car um, this completely excels as being an outstanding family vehicle and it's why it's a sigma leader and i think it's great that toyota hasn't rested on laurels it's really easy to be number one of sales in a segment and just kind of lay flat and say oh, i'm not going to do much but like i said i Chad filled me in on a lot of the background of the Camry uh, when I called him about it. And he's a car enthusiast. So I know when, you know, Toyota continues to put car enthusiasts in place that these cars do get more fun and they can put a smile on our face compared to, you know, let's be honest, some of the things that they were doing in the 2000s. All right, so another thing, so I'm flooring it right now and the car you see is steering. So 
the car is not overpowering. It's perfectly balanced in the sense of I can floor the 2025 Camry all-wheel drive XSE. And there you see there was no torques there. And also, I didn't feel, you saw I was pretty comfortable talking to you while I'm doing that. Um, so that's the thing. Obviously, if this car gets up, you know, the more power you add, then, yeah, it could be more fun in the sense of it's more capable. But, you know, for driving around town, you know, the argument is, do you really need that in a family sedan of this nature? Um, I think they made the right choice in saying, hey, you know, we'll, we'll go with the hybrid. We'll keep it, you know, less uh, tantalizing, obviously, with the loss of the V6. Um, so, yeah, I think that is a, a great big positive of the car, obviously. And, you know, this comes with Toyota safety uh, sense. So there's all sorts. Of, I mean, there's a round view cameras, all sorts of sensors left and right. I'm doing zero to 60 right now. So, look, you know, 40, 50. 60 so yeah you know it can easily get out of its way i think a lot of times we get caught up on the internet arguing about oh my gosh everything has to be zero to 60 in like two two or three seconds at this time but honestly this is faster than most now you'll get the argument right oh well a tesla model 3 i can get some rebates and you know it's about 40 grand and it does zero to 60 in three seconds and i'm very happy for you um if you value acceleration there's gonna be no real beating a full battery electric vehicle right so with the the, the hybrid powertrain um in this particular sense you are losing acceleration but again you have the comfort of knowing you have a trusted engine with that 2.5 liter in line four you have the you know the, the greatest gen generation of the latest generation of toyota technology and you know you can go across country you got to worry about chargers you don't have to worry about any of that in that sense so that's the reason this continues to be one of the you know the, the top sellers in its class obviously and I think consumers have really recognized that. All right, 2025 Toyota Camry XSC all-wheel drive. Um, here at a closed down gas station because you won't be needing much gas when you're getting this many miles per gallon from such an outstanding vehicle. Um, definitely want to thank uh, Toyota USA and their press team for loaning me the car for a week. And I'm excited to hopefully share more in the future. Peace.